Okay, um, life on the edge of a bubble, blowing the American dream. Let's zoom in on this with Alan Greenspan on the cover. And yes, uh, they say you can't judge a film or a book by its cover. Well, you can this one. Great cover, great uh, film. And uh, why don't you, again, start describing the film, and we're going to put the trailer coming up in a few minutes, uh, and then break down uh, for people who are out there uh, listening, the point you were making about uh, these different bubbles we've had in the past versus these new mega bubbles. All right. Well, I mean, the easiest way for me to sum up exactly what the film is about is just to use an analogy. And that is if you give a if you give an umpire a thousand dollars before he makes the play, what do you call that? You call that a bribe. Yes. If you give a thousand dollars to a judge right before he renders his verdict, what do you call that? You call it a bribe. Not anymore. They call it uh, here in Texas. They openly take the money stolen from the people. <laughs> well, I would call it a bribe, and I think most people would. And it, they call it law enforcement, boy. <laughs> Some kind of Al Qaeda. The point is, is that, that my next example here is if you give a thousand dollars to a politician right before he, you know, votes on your bill, what do you call that? It's not called a bribe. They call that a campaign contribution, and I think that's what you're getting at. Um, it's just become absolutely acceptable for the, uh, you know, the. The, the people in Washington who are trying to leech off of and persuade others to vote on their particular legislation, whoever they work for, whatever the lobby is, whatever the situation. And we cover that, we address that quite a bit in the documentary because, you know, how can you possibly have a, a representative in office who truly represents the people if his campaign cost him $6.5 million on average to get reelected? You didn't contribute any of that money to his financial campaign. You can't even get in there to talk to the senator unless you've contributed. Offshore corporations did. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, these are the people that are, are presenting us with uh, the problem, and it's the corporations that uh, really started out, at, as you see in the beginning of the film, about uh, 200 or so years ago with uh, Alexander Hamilton, who was our first Secretary of the Treasury. He decided that we needed to have a... Uh, a corporate system in the United States uh, for the banking, and, and I forget exactly what they call it. It's, you know, the um, corporate, uh, what was it called? Don't don't get me to lie. Watch the movie. But um, the point is, is that Alexander Hamilton, our, our Secretary of the Treasury, the guy who appears on the $10 bill, is responsible for setting up banking corporations in the United States for the purpose of keeping all of this money that is created through the generation of credit and issuance of credit in private hands. Take all that money out of private hands. Imagine, at the peak of our bubble, we were borrowing a billion dollars a day, a billion dollars a day from foreign investors to feed our credit habit. All right, The money that was being uh, made on top of the credit, the, the interest that's paid back, if we were to simply funnel that back into the treasury, back into our hands, the people's hands, who it belongs to in the first place, I don't think you'd see anybody paying taxes. You surely wouldn't see a federal deficit. Uh, I mean, no, absolutely. This fiat money, a fractional reserve system, uh, a lot of economists have argued if it was done right, would actually empower the people. The problem is it's always going to be abused. It's always going to be used. And uh, 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 the trade deficit alone is hundreds of billions of dollars a month now. And uh, that's another form of fractional reserve manipulation. And, and that goes into the whole neo-mercantile uh, uh, model. But uh, please continue. So I think everybody gets the example there where we're talking about between a bribe and a financial contribution. Um, and now they've stolen trillions of dollars. <laughs> and they're going to keep doing it. And the the purpose of this film is to bring all of these issues to light right now because it is right at this moment when people can see the mask coming off of this monster that they will rise up and take action. It's not when they see their gun rights disappearing. It's not when they see their First Amendment rights disappearing. It's when they're affected by money, their pocketbooks. All right, so um, I think that this is a perfect opportunity for us to jump in there and get people motivated to take some action to make these changes that we're talking about. Well, that's what Ron Paul keeps saying and what I keep saying is that the bankers are going to use the crisis they've engineered on record to bring in even more power and control for themselves as they're doing right now. So we are forced to point out they're the architects of all of this and hopefully use the crisis to kick them out of power instead of them getting more power. It's not like they're just going to get away with this. They are going for broke now because they know they've committed so many crimes already 
uh, that this is going to be the mother of all corruptions. That, and, and so there's nothing they won't do. They are committed to their cause. They have pledged their names, their honor, their money, their treasure, their blood, their sweat, their souls on this. Their lack of honor. Absolutely. And then meanwhile, the public's drinking beer, still watching the football game, having no idea what we're in the clutches of and thinking, politicians are trying to fix it, Marge. No, they're not trying to fix it. They are... Like cockroaches, when they've been sprayed with poison, fornicating like they know their time is short. They are going maximum corrupt right now. And uh, we're going to see more and more fireworks from here on out. The, I don't think people understand what they've done with these bailouts. Uh, the $750,000 bailout, the very first one we passed, and then the second one, the $850 billion uh, take that money and add that up, divide that by how many people in this country have a home mortgage, and you could pay off literally 90% of the home mortgages in this country. If they really wanted to put money back into the economy, give people an extra thousand, two thousand dollars a month, they would have paid off their, their mortgage bills, not fed money into the banks that created the problem in the first place. The William, I totally agree with you. Uh, continue describing what the film goes through. I mean, if somebody gets, um, Life on the Edge of a Bubble, Blowing the American Dream, because I mean, it covers a whole bunch of uh, different subjects, really a wide spectrum analysis of how this uh, scam works. Yeah, well, th then towards the end, we do get into the Federal Reserve, and we tell people how these things have connected. But really and truly, I don't want to give too much away in the film, because it, it, this is unlike anything I've ever done before, where I, I typically will use horror. I will typically use scare tactics in a documentary to try and frighten people, because I like horror movies, and those are the kind of movies I like to make. All right, But this is, a, this is kind of a... a you know, I'm bowing out from that and, and trying to create something a little more comical. And there's this is this thing sets up certain situations, and you think it's going in one direction, and when we get there, you realize that's not where we went. Yeah, it's a, it's a great film. Yeah, so uh, you know, I I hesitate to give away too many of the little secrets that are in there, so that people will get a good uh, you know entertainment quality out of it when they watch it. But um, the the clips alone, uh, we researched over 750 different film reels from 1900 to now, grabbing up commercials and grabbing up footage that applies. Uh, you know, for instance, some of the uh, public uh, service announcements that were coming out in the 30s and the 40s for kids in school, talking about you shouldn't steal or talking about um, going to a party. We, you know, the, the entire documentary we refer to the bubble that we're talking about here as a party. That's what it is. Everybody was invited to the party. Once everybody got there, the banking corporations started spiking the punch, and then everybody got really happy and crazy and thought nobody could lose money. Housing prices will never go down. These are the lies that we bought into and believed, and of course they were totally false. If you look through history, every 20 years you find out it is false. And I can't believe that Alan Greenspan and some of these men in the positions that they're in can't look back over the last 200 years of our country's history and figure it, figure this out for themselves. Well, they know what they're doing. I mean, it's all premeditated on record. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, sometimes I wonder if they're in as much control as they actually think that they are. Uh, I mean, I know that they're out there manipulating, and there's oftentimes that we can, you know, draw a direct correlation to something that they've done and blame them for it. But I think a lot of times we get caught up in this, and we don't realize how much of a part we play in it just by, you know, letting Madison Avenue talk us into, you know, through their advertising. For instance, uh, you know, going out and taking out an equity loan on our home to either fix it up or go buy another one to flip it later. Um, and so many people that got this money spent it on crap at Walmart, stuff that you don't even know what they bought with it. Yeah, we're all guilty. I'm guilty. I mean, everybody's guilty. I know. It's a consumer society. It's like grazing. You like. That's why I probably only go to, to Target or Academy around here maybe once or twice a year because I just load up you know, the thing of T-shirts and fishing poles <laughs> and, 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 and ammo and I mean, I'm like a little kid in a sport sporting goods place, I'm, I'm, and I'm just like snatching things, and I, and then I get it and stick it in the garage, and there's like a giant pile of ammo, and I mean, I guess it's important to have, but what am I going to do with all this? I don't even have time to go out and shoot it. But that's less frivolous than most people. I mean, the stuff people buy and fill their houses full of. Yeah, you don't want to turn me loose in an academy because, uh, like I said, you know, Coleman lanterns and, and sleeping bags and all that stuff that they have in there, it just, you know, fascinates me and makes me whip that credit card. Are off. you kidding? Bow and arrows, <laughs> BB guns? I, got, I have a small backyard. The neighbors are always looking over the fence at me, BB gunning and pellet gunning and bow and arrow back there. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's certainly a lot of fun. I was just in an academy the other day because we lost all the arrows. 
My, my parents have three acres in town. I go over there and shoot them into the woods and end up losing them. But my uh, kids are quite the little Robin Hoods. <laughs> yeah, we were on our way in. It was all I could do to not stop at the academy. We don't have them in Missouri. Oh, you saw Valhalla. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. In fact, I'll be uh, visiting Academy before I leave just to buy a little trinket and say I visited Academy while I was here. But um, The only problem with Academy on the side issue is I bought one gun there. And I go in and the manager comes down. He goes, oh, I'm a big fan. I saw you on the surveillance camera. And then he, I bought the handgun, bought the ammo, and then he said, oh, I'm going to give it to you once you get to your car. And he was, I think they were kind of scared of me, like I was going to grab the handgun and, you know, start like, you know, Old Western in a saloon or something. But hell, Walmart writes your name down when you buy ammo now. So you can't buy ammo at Walmart. I didn't even know that. Yeah, they, well, they don't do it at Academy yet. But so what do you want at Academy? Uh, I think I want a new Coleman Lantern. They brought back the old fashioned, uh, you know, uh, pewter metal cap guns that are like heavy with a holster. Uh -huh. 